division of a polynomial by a polynomial is a little bit harder. And it follows the pattern of long division, arithmetically, like we used when we were a kid. We said when we did this problem that 15 divides into 31 twice, and we put that 2 over top of that 1, and 15 times 2 was 30. And the next step here was to subtract the 30 from the 31. And that gave us 1, and we brought down the 7. And we did that process again. So 15 divided into 7 once, and 1 times 15 is 15. And we subtracted, and we had a remainder of 2. Our answer to this problem, if we stopped right here with that remainder, was the number 21 and the remainder of 2 over the divisor of 15, or 2 15 We're going to do this polynomial, this problem, much the same way. So we're going to take the x squared minus 6x plus 9, and we're going to long divide it by, if you will, I'm going to say it like that, by x minus 3. So what I'm going to ask you is, how many times does x divide into x squared? It's real hard to process. This is what I just said. How many times does x divide into x squared? And it goes in there x times. Here's an easier way to think of it. What I'm going to ask you to put up here is something times that x that will give you the x squared exactly. That needs to be an x. Remember up here, I put the 2 here and I took 2 times 15 gave me 30. I'm going to take that x times that x and put it down here. So I'm, I'm multiplying that. And the x times a minus 3 is a minus 3x. At this point, I subtracted the 30 from the 31. Well, when I want to subtract this from up here, when you subtract, you add the opposite. So consider using a colored pencil for yourself. The x squared will become minus, and this will become positive in order to subtract. And as a result, these first terms will always add to be nothing. This minus 6 and this plus 3 will add to be a negative 3x. And now I will bring down the positive 9 and start the process over again. So what I want to ask you now is what would you put in this next spot so that if you multiplied it by x, you got a negative 3x exactly. And you would need a negative 3 here because a negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. You want it to match exactly. And a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. And now you're ready to subtract that from the above. So when I subtract this, I add the opposite and the opposite here. Those always will combine to be 0. In this case, they combine to be 0. So my remainder is 0 in this problem. And my answer is just this x minus 3. So the solution to this problem is x minus 3. Let's do one now that has a remainder instead of a remainder of 0. And I'm going to give myself a little bit more room by not writing the original problem down. If I ask you to take x squared minus 10x minus 25 and divide it by x minus 5, you first would ask yourself what times the variable x gives you x squared, and you would state that that's x. You would distribute this and just check that out, see if that's really true. So x times x is really x squared, and x times the minus 5 is a minus 5x. Please remember at this point, again, you're subtracting, and whenever you subtract, you add the opposite. So this would be a negative, and this would be a positive. These terms always adding to be nothing, because you've made them match. So when you add the opposite, they add to be nothing. And a negative 10x and a positive 5x is a minus 5x and you'll bring down your next term and start the process again. So what times x, let's get rid of these arrows so we don't get confused here, what times x gives us a minus 5x, and that's a minus 5. So yep, a minus 5 times x gives me that minus 5x, and a minus times a minus is a positive 25. And I'm ready to subtract these, so I have to add the opposite. So this one becomes a positive, and this one becomes a negative. Those do add to be nothing, but this negative 25 and that negative 25 is a negative 50. When I have a, remind, a remainder in these problems, I have to write this much like I did the arithmetic problem that was up in the previous one. I have my answer of x minus 5, plus I have a remainder of a negative 50 over my divisor of x minus 5. You can write it like this. 
Or you can also, plus a negative is the same thing as minus 50 over x minus 5. So either way, I prefer this way. And the computer should accept either. Let's do um, one or two more. Let's see if we have time for a couple. Let's keep this into a 10-minute segment. Let's take um, x squared plus 5x minus 9 and divide that by x minus 2. So again, what times x gives you x squared? That is x. And I'll put that x squared down here, so I got that. x times a minus 2 is a minus 2x. I'm a big advocate when dividing um, long division, a polynomial by a polynomial, of using a different color pen right here to subtract. So I'm going to add the opposite of this one and the opposite of that one. Again, those add to be nothing. And 5 and 2 add to be a total of 7x, and you bring down your minus 9. I need a 7 up here so that when I multiply it by x, I get a 7x. And that 7 times the minus 2 is a minus 14. And again, change my signs. Those are 0. A positive 14 and a negative 9 adds to be a positive 5. And my answer will be written as x plus 7 with a remainder of 5 over the divisor of x minus 2. Let's try one where I do not have descending order of the exponents. So I don't have x to the second power, x to the first power, and then a constant. Let's take x squared minus 25. And would you please notice I left a little gap here. There's no x term. And let's divide that by um, x minus 5. We often write what I call kind of a ghost space here, and I'm going to put it in red, a 0x position, because 0 times anything is nothing. But follow the process that I've been following. So I need an x up here, because x times x is this x squared. But this x times a minus 5 is a minus 5x, and it needed a place to go. If this minus 25 had been sitting right here, it's not a light term with the minus 5x. So I needed a little bit of room here to put that, that term in place. Now I'll subtract, so I'll change those signs. 0x and 5x adds to be 5x, and I bring down the minus 25. Finally, I'll put a 5 here, because 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times a negative 5 is a negative 25. And I will change my sign, and I happen to get a remainder of 0 again. So my answer to this problem is x plus 5. The one thing you should notice is that when you do a long division problem, if you um, take your results and multiply it by your divisor, you should get what you started with. So um, my answer of x plus 5 times my divisor of x minus 5 in this particular case, when I FOIL that out, I get x squared. Here's a minus 5x, here's a plus 5x, that's gone, they had to be 0, and 5 times a minus 5 is a minus 25. That's the dividend, this x squared minus 25 that I started with. Um, I think I'm going to pause here at the end at the, with this segment, and I might throw one more, one more division problem at you and show you the check again as well.